Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, the Battleship crew is on Staten Island on board the destroyer escort USS Slater, which is currently on dry dock. If you'd like to visit Slater, she's normally on display in Albany, New York. While Battleship New Jersey is displayed in her 1990s configuration, Slater is one of the few ships in this country which is able to be displayed in her original World War II configuration thanks to the restoration work of her volunteers and staff. During World War II, Battleship New Jersey, like Slater, would have had two air defense warfare positions like this one. On New Jersey, a lieutenant commander would have been the air defense warfare officer. The main station would have been on the O11 level on top of the superstructure and it would have featured a number of chairs like this one. A secondary station was located on the after superstructure near aft fire control. Now these chairs can rotate and elevate so that we can track incoming flights of aircraft. They feature angle markers like this, so you can see at what angle the bearing to the enemy aircraft is. And they also have another one here, so you can see what your bearing is to the target rotationally. This gives your gunners a good sense of where to start aiming their directors and their guns. It also gives your lookouts a good idea of what to look at. And having the binoculars here makes it easier for me to identify what the incoming flight of aircraft is. Are they Grumman F-6F Hellcats here to form our combat air patrol? Or are they Japanese VAL dive bombers, potentially kamikazes here to sink the ship? Slater was initially armed with eight single mount 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns for close in work. These are similar to what Battleship New Jersey had and of what we have on display on the battleship. By the end of World War II, the 20 millimeter didn't have enough stopping power for modern aircraft, particularly kamikazes, which had to be completely destroyed before they hit your vessel. So Slater's eight single mounts were removed and replaced with seven twin mounts. That's what we have here. Each twin mount has a ready service ammunition locker with it, which have the 60 round clips. There is a separate clip for the right hand feed and the left hand feed, and they are painted differently so you know which clip it is. Each 20 millimeter gun pump comes complete with a spare barrel holder, or if the barrel overheats, and these late war Mark 14 gun sights. These were state of the art at the end of World War II. Like other gun sights on USS Slater, Battleship New Jersey would have had, but does not currently have any on display. Below me are two of the three three inch 50 caliber guns that Slater has as her main battery. These guns are dual purpose. They could be used against surface targets or aerial targets, but unlike New Jersey's guns, they're in open mounts. So you can see, to prevent them from getting damaged in the weather, they're covered in canvas tarps. Also, whereas New Jersey has enclosed mounts with all sorts of electrical equipment inside, Slater's open mounts have to be a little bit simpler. You might be able to notice painted around the end, edges of the gun tub are some numbers. Those are degree numbers telling you the angle of rotation of the gun so that when the director tells them to turn to 180 degrees, they can match that. This is where the torpedo tubes were originally mounted. Late war, they were removed. 
there were no more major enemy warships for us to fight. The real threat was from aircraft. So they upgunned many of the destroyer escorts with additional 40 millimeter guns. And each gun had its own Mark 51 director. So each gun could track a separate kamikaze and you could engage multiple aircraft at once. Battleship New Jersey also had 40 millimeter guns with Mark 51 directors like these. While we have a 40 millimeter on display now, we have no directors. Just forward of the funnel on the 01 level, is a three inch practice loading machine. Battleship New Jersey would have had a similar loading machine aft of the second funnel on her superstructure, but it was removed before her 1980s commission. This is so that the gun crews can practice loading rounds, usually wooden dummies like this one, without having to actually fire and clear the breach of their, their mounts. On New Jersey's, this would have been a twin mount, five inch loading machine, but the same basic principle. On board New Jersey, the shells are passed to the gun through dredger hoists from the magazines. On a destroyer escort, they're passed by hand through hatches. The hoist on New Jersey sets the fuse of the shell. On Slater, once the shell comes to the gun, you've got to set the fuse prior to ramming it in the barrel. This is one of three twin mount 40 millimeter guns that Slater had at the end of World War II. Battleship New Jersey was armed with all quadruple mounts, 20 of them by the end of the war. Well, they were basically two twin mounts slammed together. By having separate twin mounts, Slater was able to track more targets than if she had a single quadruple mount. Battleship New Jersey does have a single example of one of her 40 millimeter guns on board, but we do not have the gun top that goes with it. And Slater not only has the gun top restored, they have it full of clips of 40 millimeter ammunition and in other places you can see the gun crew's helmets hanging on racks. you also notice the ocean blue canvas draped over this to keep the gun, uh, the ammunition dry while the ship is at sea. This is your ready service ammunition in an engagement while you're waiting for other rounds to be brought up manually from the magazine. Right off of the open bridge where the captain would command, and directly below the Mark 51 director, is a destroyer escort's equivalent of main battery plot. This small space is where all the complex computations to aim the guns at targets take place. Right now, it's being used to store a lot of the equipment here on the bridge that we don't want damaged while the ship's in dry dock. So, pardon the mess. I'm going to apologize right now for the sound quality because we are in an active shipyard actively dry docking this vessel. Also, I'm going to apologize because some of the stuff we talk about is undercover. But when you go out to Albany to see Slater, you can see this stuff live and uncovered. This is the Mark 52 Gunnery Director. It is the main battery fire control system for destroyer escorts like Slater. The three inch guns all receive their firing information from this, which can both track aerial targets as well as surface targets. This is a World War II innovation uh, and it would have been supplemented by optical range finders, which could have tracked targets if we lost power if this went down. Thanks for watching this video about World War II anti-aircraft guns on the destroyer escort Slater and their associated directors. Remember to like, share, and subscribe so you get notifications when we're putting out new content. If you would like to support Battleship New Jersey and our YouTube channel, check the description down below for a link to our donation page. Also check for a link to USS Slater's 
donation page so you can support their museum. This dry docking period is funded largely through private donations. 